this is Jill Sandello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I'm here in person with the Ford F-150 Lightning. Now, I do have a review coming that's going to talk about driving impressions, towing, hauling, and all that good stuff, but this is not that video. Instead, what I want to do in this video is do a quick walk around and show you some of the cool features. So, let's take a closer look right now. have checked out the Ford F-150 Lightning at auto shows, but this is the first time we've actually been handed the keys and can poke around and climb around a little bit. So I just wanted to do a walk around. We'll start with the exterior uh, and you, so you can just take a closer look at the vehicle uh, out in the wild, so to speak. So I don't know. The first thing you're going to notice is it looks a lot like a Ford F-150, a regular gasoline version and one of the big markers here is this kick down window that gives you some excellent visibility out of these side windows. You have uh, wheels here that are designed to be more aerodynamic and uh, a little bit more fuel efficient because when you are looking at like 300 miles of range you want all of that range <laughs> to uh, be operable uh, so you don't want to lose any any range because you have bad wheels. So what I want to do is I'm going to start right here with the front because I think this is probably the coolest feature and it has several ways to open it so let's just start with the obvious so to open it from the front um, if you have the key on your person you can just click a little button there it's like opening a trunk and then it will just pop open so this has 400 liters 400 liters of um, cargo volume and it has 400 pound payload so that this is really cool if you are taking road trip and you want to store your luggage in here it does hold two sets of golf clubs which is really nice and uh, by the way you could also tailgate out of this because if you open this right here and um, you take out the charging cord because you wouldn't want that in here for this you can tailgate um, because you have a plug in a drain right here so you can put liquid in here and a whole bunch of beverages and then you can drain it when you're done but again yeah maybe you want to remove that for that cord first um, and then when you're done you can just flip this little cover back over and pop it back down into place and there you go so a couple of other things to notice back here there is an emergency release button so if somebody I don't know, like a Simonello got stuck back here. You could press that and it would pop open. You have lighting, so um, you can turn the lighting on and off with that button right here. And you do have Pro Power on board right here. So you do have to turn it on from inside the vehicle, but once it is on, you have your plugs and you have a USB-C and a USB-A charge port back here. That's kind of a neat feature, frankly. Um, all right, you also have a lot of tie downs that you can, or I guess I should say hooks, not really tie downs, but hooks back here that you can hang grocery bags off of. If you have a net, you can put the net on here and um, create some separation of space. So this is a really functional frunk. Um, if you aren't familiar with the term frunk, that is front trunk. Uh, so really functional. Ford put a lot of thought into this. It's, it's big, it's usable, and it has a lot of functional features. Okay, so we saw how to open it by hitting the button. Now you can also open it and close it by using the key fob. So there's a button on here and you have this button right here. If you hit it twice, the front trunk will close. So there are several ways to open it. So like I said, you can hit the button, you can use the key fob. There's also a button on the dash inside that you can press that will open and close the frunk as well. All right, let's move around to the back of the vehicle. So, all right, tailgate, pretty obvious, but you have three ways, again, that you can open and close this. So button on the dash and your key fob here. So you double click the key fob, it will open. And if you want to close it, same thing, you just double click on the key fob. But here are two extra ways that you can close it that I think are pretty cool. So we saw this on the Ford F-150 redesign model. You just simply use your knee 
give it a little bop and it will close. But similar to the front trunk, there is also a button. So you can press the button to open it and you can also press the button to close it. One of the interesting things about this back here is they've also made this space kind of a functional work area. So you can plug in a clamp. And again, if you are familiar with a regular F-150, none of this is gonna be a super big surprise to you. So you can plug in a clamp, you have uh, rulers here, you have a workspace, you have a step. Let's see if I can do this one handed. <laughs> you have a little step here that pops out. So that's really cool. So a lot of functional things going on here. And um, yeah, if you're a little bit unsteady on your feet, you can pull out this little handrail and that will help you out. But again, if you are familiar with the regular F-150, none of that right there should surprise you. But again, I just, I don't know. I really like the key fob activation for opening the frunk and the tailgate. Let's climb inside and take a look at what's going on in there. All right, stepping inside, one of the first things I want you to pay attention to is this intro animation. I'm gonna point out, you don't actually have to wait for this animation to stop before you start the car. So if you're in a dangerous situation, you're concerned about your safety, um, you don't have to wait for this to cycle through. You can push the start button at any time and the vehicle will turn on. I just think it's kind of fun to look at. All right, so that stopped. And then you can come over here. You've got your start button there and turn it on. This is a Lariat trim. So what this has is the 15 inch screen. Now the standard screen is going to be a, I think they said it was a 12 inch or 13 inch screen and it's more of a portrait shape, but this is, or more of a landscape shape. This is the portrait shape. And uh, I think they said this is standard starting at the Lariat trim on up. Uh, you do have a 12.3 digital gauge cluster and that is going to be standard on everything from the lowest trim all the way on up. Um, you have options here. Um, so in order to get to your settings, like this is pretty plain and simple, but in order to get to your vehicle settings and to change anything, you just hit this image of the truck right there and then you have your um, screen pops up you've got some drive modes so normal mode that's kind of what i've been playing with you've got your sport mode you've got um huh, with a little animation there on a racetrack totally going to take a ford f-150 on a racetrack right um off-road modes there so um you can't use your one pedal driving when you're in off-road mode but all right so here you go now you're in off-road mode and so um it changes the graphic there right there and if you want to go into tow haul mode again um, you'll have a little bit of a graphic change shows you you've um, got a little trailer there um, and really not much is happening back here the, I, I think these colors are changing let's see just to kind of give you a visual cue here that um, you are in different modes uh, but otherwise um, you don't have any graphic animation or anything going on back there. So I'm going to put it back in normal mode. So you have your screen, your cameras. So cameras are really cool because you've got this 360 camera here and then you have your, so this is my back view right now. Uh, but you can, uh, have a little menu here and then you can change the different views of, of what you are looking at. So, uh, this creates a little sonar representation rather than using the camera. Uh, I don't love that. This gives you the, um, what is it, the 180 degree out the front. Um, then you can do, you know, full back. Uh, I don't know. I just, I, I like the around view setup. So this is, this is where I would leave it because, yeah, I just like that. Um, but you can X out of that. And... Again, you have your controls right here, your settings right here. So pairing your phone, um, looks like Sophie and Bay has been here from <laughs> Redline Reviews. Um, and you can create personal profiles, driver assistance technology, and 
all of that. So that's that's how you kind of mess around with the settings. And I created a profile, by the way, G-I-T-T is short for girl in the trunk. Um, inside joke there, I guess. Um, but you can create your profile and what it will do um, if you look at it, it sets up, um, like you can change your name, it gets your seat position stored, it pairs it to your key. Um, if you, um, I, I didn't add my phone, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why that's grayed out, but um, you can add your phone. So when you come in, everything is just synced to your phone, your driving position, you can change your profile picture. If I wanted to actually put a picture of myself in there, I could totally do that. Um, and as I use the vehicle, the more I use it, these intelligent suggestions will pop up with um, like basically favorites of um, like time of day. Oh, you always call your mother at five o'clock and it'll pop up and yeah, you call your mother at five o'clock. So um, I don't know, at any rate, I. I think this is pr pretty cool. You can create a customized profile. I know a lot of vehicles are doing that these days, but yep, there you go. You have that option. So this is Sync 4, um, not a Google system. Uh, we've been looking at a lot of GM vehicles lately that have the Google operating system. This is a Ford system. Features that you will also see on the regular Ford F-150. Um, so this, this shouldn't be new to you. You do have the uh, little, gear shift that folds flat so that you can then if i didn't have beverages you can open up the workspace and uh, then you can put that back up you have the wireless charging pad right here and then you have usb c and usb a charge ports up front you have uh let's see a uh, really decent sized uh whoo, really decent sized um charging or not charging a uh, cubby hole back there with another I see a USB-C USB-A charge port in there so uh, lots of really usable functional storage space in here you could you could fit a computer you can fit a, I would say medium to large size person here uh, maybe not a briefcase but there's there's a lot of stuff that you can put in here so love the storage capacity however the one thing that I'm going to say that is my absolute favorite feature is going to be this right here and that is the adjustable pedals. I was just talking to somebody from Ford and I'm like, please, please, please don't ever get rid of those. Because what it does is it moves the pedals, let's see if I can give you a good angle, forward and backward. So that allows you to um, really customize the driving position for you. So um, if you have longer arms, shorter legs, you can uh, move these out and then push the steering wheel away from you so that you get the right distance from the steering wheel longer legs, shorter arms, etc. I don't know. I just I think that is singularly the most important feature on a, a vehicle, on a truck especially, and I I I begged Ford not to not to get rid of it. So panoramic moonroof and again, these amazing windows with that kick down that gives you excellent visibility out of the side window to see a squirrel or something running past squirrel one other thing i will point out we did not see this on the gmc vehicles we were just driving you have a sunglass case that should make tim happy i'm interrupting the walk around i'm doing of the lariat trim to take a quick look at this work truck now as equipped this is about fifty six thousand dollars so it does add some towing trailering packaging things and it also has the extended range battery now the biggest thing that you are going to notice that is different on the work truck model especially from the front is the i don't know your grill plate I don't know what you want to call that the front, the front part of the truck this is just a little bit more plain and simple than you will see on the upper trim models not to mention the fact that the light part does not go all the way across the front now another thing that i would like to point out on this vehicle is the fact that it doesn't have running boards and because it doesn't have running boards yeah you can see the under bits a little bit so I, I just thought that was kind of interesting i was like wait a minute is that lower it's not lower it's just the running boards on the other vehicles cover up those bits. So um, taking a quick look on the inside of the work truck, you're going to notice that there are manual adjusting seats, which by the way, for a petite driver, not really good because you can't lower this part of the seat. Um, and you have 
your manual adjustment there. Um, but the other thing that is uh, noticeable on the interior of this truck is going to be the fact that you have your vinyl seats instead of leather. And you also have the landscape uh, infotainment system instead of the portrait one. So horizontal rather than vertical, and it's a little bit smaller. So still really big, just a little bit smaller, but you do still have the 12.3 inch digital display. Uh, behind the wheel and that is going to be standard. So no moonroof here and a little bit more plasticky materials on the interior, but there you go. That is a quick look at the work truck of the Ford F-150 Lightning. So now I want to do a quick interruption of my interruption to the walk around of the Lariat trim because I happen to have an XLT trim and a platinum trim right here. And so just wanted to take a quick look at the differences here. So, and I mean quick, really, really quick because people are waiting to drive these trucks. So the grill insert is going to be different. This is still a little bit plasticky, but it has a little bit more texture than the work truck. And then when you come over here, this has more of a gloss material to it and well, just looks nicer. So you've got that going on. Then when you come inside, you can see some material differences. So you've got some cloth seats here. Um, you have the horizontal screen again. And, you know, I mean, leather wrapped steering wheel, but some less expensive materials than what you will find in the Platinum trim. But you do have your power seats. So for petite drivers, that is going to be really important. I will also point out your wheels are also going to be different. So you come over here, they're a little bit more uh, designed and um, you've got the high gloss black with the uh, aluminum, aluminum appearance. And then when you come inside, you will notice a very large difference. So premium materials and these seats are even more adjustable than the other seats. You've got some nice accents here. You've got the excellent stitching. Uh, leather materials, much more up-level finishes, and then you have this tall vertical screen. So, um, yeah, so that just gives you a quick look. Oh, and here you go, panoramic moonroof. So that just gives you a quick look at the other trims uh, of the vehicle, in addition to the Lariat that we are taking a more in-depth look at. All right, that is my 10-cent tour of the Ford F-150 Lightning, Ford's first all-electric vehicle. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what I think of it just yet, so stay tuned for more coming next week. But that's it. That's some of the cool features. That's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com, and I will see you down the road.